Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to cover the new 99 Shades of Summer cards, as well as the new content that was released for the Shades of Summer event, including the new free agent signings, as well as talk about the community team of the week. If you missed last week's video, I covered it. Basically, what EA did was for the team of the week, we allowed they allowed us to make selections basically via the EA forum, and we got the results of what the most requested players were from it. So we'll break those down as well. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we are on the road to 50,000 subs this year and if you were looking for the latest NHL 22 news and information keep it locked right here all right let's get into the content guys all right guys so here is the most requested cards for the community team of the week and we will start with the 98 Alex Ovechkin I'm not going to break down these cards really as you can see on screen they're basically maxed out and I just kind of wanted to cover who the community wanted the most in terms of this community team of the week event so we've got 98 Alex Ovechkin obviously the cover athlete and one of the most popular goal scorers of all time just signed a big new extension as well to remain in DC for it looks like the duration of his career and the chase is on for Gretzky's goal record so the 98 Alex Ovechkin then we've got the 99, Connor McDavid, the best card in the game, in my opinion, this year. And, you know, the best player in the world. He's incredible. I can't wait to see what he does with, uh, I mean, I guess we talked about in the free agent and trade videos, just, man, Edmonton. It's going to be really interesting to see Edmonton next year. Then the 97, Patrick Kane. I've not been a fan of Patrick Kane over the past few years, specifically in Hut. He's just felt uh, really easy to knock off the puck. However, this year, he's been really fun. I don't know if it was the change in the meta and how the gameplay does, but he is really, really shifty and obviously still one of the most popular players in the league. The 98, Gabriel Landis Cog. Uh, obviously, the big free agent, well, I guess reacquisition for the Colorado Avalanche, the captain staying there. Thought he might be a Kraken, but nonetheless, he is still on the Avalanche. And honestly, he's been one of, it's just, it's always his skating. Every year, Landis Cog has never really had a card that when it's come out, been like, wow, this is elite. It's, uh, it's always weird. Always weird. Then we've got the 98 Austin Matthews. Probably one of the best goal scorers in the league, if not the best behind Alex Ovechkin, probably. Uh, but his build, he is going to be a force in Hockey Ultimate Team for pretty much the duration of his career. Then we've got his teammate, Mitch Marner. Mitch Marner, uh, again, a lot like Patrick Kane, in my opinion, Hockey Ultimate Team. Um, every time I've used him in the last couple of years, he's just really slender at 175. And the way I play the game and just trying to control the puck and, and work it down low and things like that, I don't really find him uh, very good at holding onto the puck. He reminds me a lot of Elias Pettersson and Patrick Kane up until this year. Then the 96, Tim Stutzla. He is going to be uh, a sore spot for me for his entire career, probably, as he should have been a San Jose Shark had it not been for John Tavares choosing the Toronto Maple Leafs over the Sharks. But nonetheless, that's for, you know, basically every video I talk about the Sharks. But nonetheless, this suits the card really, really good. He's basically maxed out, and uh, he's going to be really, really fun to watch over the next couple of years. Nick Suzuki became extremely popular in Montreal's improbable Stanley Cup final run, and this card's basically perfect all the way through. Again, another great player who's slowly and, or I guess quickly, becoming one of the better two-way players in the game. Kyler Yamamoto. This one's kind of surprising, uh, but nonetheless, I'm chat. I mean, everyone knows who Tactics HD is, but I really think Kyler Yamamoto kind of looks like Tactics HD in this in this picture specifically. Let me know in the comments section. <laughs> but regardless, five foot eight, it's always going to be tough for him in hockey ultimate team to be effective unless he has elite speed. And uh, this card, unfortunately, does not. Then we've got the 95 Kasperi Kapanen. Um, you know, uh, this card is basically maxed out with synergies, but I'm surprised that the people wanting Kasperi Kapanen. And then Patrice Bergeron, he is always so much more effective at the beginning of the year than he is as the year goes on, just because of his immense faceoff rating, uh, especially at launch of the game. Uh, but here he is, Patrice Bergeron. Then we've got the 98, Sidney Crosby. And again, up until this year, I never really found him all that good. This year, I found his cards to be great. I found he just had a really wicked shot. And uh, yeah, he gets the 98 in the community team of the week. Now let's take a look at the community defenseman, Victor Hedman. No surprise here. The best card, best defenseman. Well, technically second best defenseman in the game. And uh, always a force in Hockey Ultimate Team with his size, speed, and shot. 
Adam Fox is next, and he is, man, he quietly had one of the best seasons as a defenseman, and it's odd because New York is such like a vocal focal point of the uh, of the NHL community but uh yeah just I honestly don't know why it went so under the radar but incredible season and I'm excited to see how he does and grows as he's only 22 years old and Oliver Ekman Larson the new acquisition from Vancouver he has got a lot to live up to on that insane contract uh, but nonetheless, he has been one of the best defensemen all year long. His base card was incredible and one of the best buys early on in the game. Then we've got the 90, Tyler Myers, six foot eight. He was the best card basically outside of Zidane Chara in NHL 20. Just never got the speed, thank God, um, in, in NHL 21. But still, that size is just so hard to play against in the uh, defensive zone. And the 89, Tim Heed. This has th- my man Thrash written all over it. X Shark Goat. Tim Heed, who had just an absolute wicked piss missile. Uh, but yeah, not uh, not in the league anymore, but nonetheless, Tim Heed, fan favorite of Thrash. And then 99, Kale McCarr. Honestly, my favorite player to watch outside of my Sharks. Just an incredible defenseman, 21 years old, and uh, unbelievable. He is so much fun to watch. And then the community goaltenders, we've got the 85, Ben Bishop. Ben Bishop is going to be, he is on the Mount Rushmore of Hockey Ultimate Team cards, for sure. And then the 96, Carey Price. Uh, He always plays better than his stats indicate, but, you know, with that run, and not surprising that uh, he was one of the community's picks here for for goaltender. All right, so we're almost done. All of the ninety or all of the basically gold master icons getting up to ninety nine. But today we got the Guy Lafleur. His bronze card was just so far and away the best card in the game early on. For like months, his card was incredible. Uh, however, in terms of this card, there's no point. There's literally no point to go out and acquire the ninety nine because again, guys, when you go and take a look, his ninety eight to go up plus one. He's already 99, and the only thing that you could increase is body checking and hand-eye, and if you've got this card, you probably have max synergy. So, uh, yeah, no point there, but the 99 Guy Lafleur. Then we'll take a look at some of the new Shades of Summer cards, highlighting some of the new signees and trades in the league. The 94 PS Suter, who just was not qualified by Chicago in a stunning turn of events. He was an unbelievable, and analytically, he was a phenomenal player. Uh, but here is the A94 PS Suter. Just, I mean, you really can't use him. He's so small and, and his speed is so low. But just in general, I really like PS Suter. And I think this is a really, really nice move by Iserman. Again, just in a long list of them for Detroit to pick him up. Next, we've got Jordan Cairo with the extension to the 95 at St. Louis Blues. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of the St. Louis Blues as a Sharks fan. Uh, but nonetheless, Jordan Cairo reminds me a lot of Connor Garland. If you don't get to watch a lot of Blues games, he is just unbelievable with the puck and a really, really fun player to watch. So, um, you know, if you get a chance, go and take a look at some of his goals and and creativity. He's going to be a very good player in this league for quite some time. And then lastly today, we got the 97 Joel Armia, six foot three, great size and all around a decent card, uh, but he is a pure winger. And uh, yeah, Joel Armia getting in that, is staying with the Montreal Canadiens, six foot three, unbelievable size. He's super underrated, um, but you know, just a force for the Montreal Canadiens this year, and they're going to need him to be good next year for sure. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for the content today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content. And check me out on stream. I go live at noon Eastern time every single day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.